A lot of fly fishers avoid fishing lakes because locating fish isn't obvious. Unlike streams where a log causes an obvious current deflection and subsequent seam between currents that's likely to hold fish, fish holding structure in a lake is concealed by water depth. The good news is that shoals in lake are as obvious as a downed tree in a river to look at and as likely to hold feeding fish, plenty of them. Shoals are the most obvious, most readily available features to target and exist on every lake. The most productive area in a lake is the shallower littoral zone. It receives the most sunlight penetration and the mixing of oxygen through wave action allows plants in the food chain to thrive. Shoals are simply a raised area of the lake bed, a shallow area. This can be along the shoreline or a mid-lake hump. A shoal's most important feature is its edges, the drop-off zone. It's from that drop-off zone to depth that it's most important to a fish. While the fish are obviously most interested in feeding on all those insects and bait fish up in the littoral zone, they need close proximity to the escape cover of depth. If you can find shoals next to depth, you'll likely have fish cruising and feeding all along that break all year. The simplicity of the basic setup to fish a shoal is almost embarrassing. It harkens back to that time we were five years old and Grandpa had us fishing a worm under a bobber. But guess what? It's the same thing. Only our awareness of what's going on has changed. We now know why the fish are in the depth zone we're fishing, and we only need to know the depth of the drop-off we're targeting. So from the end of your fly line, we've got a butt section here, and we're setting the indicator again about six feet above our fly. That is because we're fishing the transition zone from shallow shoal out to the depth of the lake. And what those fish are doing is they're coming up, they're feeding, and they're following that depth change line. In a river, if we we're on a river, it would be tee to green. If you've been in a drift boat with a guide across the west, they're saying always that transition zone from tee to green. On this lake, it's feel the teal. And that's basically saying, make sure that your fly is two to five, six, 10 feet out from that transition zone. Sometimes those fish come in shallower and they're higher in the water column and you can be just on the outside of that transition. Other times, like today, where they're quite a ways out, it's windy, that's got them a little bit disturbed and they're probably down 10, 15 feet, which vertically, which means that they're about 15 yards out off that drop-off zone on mass. We're not gonna be able to cast that far doing what we want to do. So we're targeting that 10 foot out from that feel the teal zone, that transition zone, and try to pick up those fish in that six foot depth range. We'll probably step that indicator down a little bit further and we'll play with our depth. And there are useful tools similar to slip bobbers we use as kids. Quick release indicators are simple to use and slide up and down your leader to set your fly's maximum depth. In this case, this indicator has a pin in the center. Feed the leader through the pin. Once on your leader, pop it out off the foam core, create a small loop in the leader, then slide the pin back in, clamping that loop. The idea is that when you hook up your fish while using a 15-foot leader, that the entire indicator will slide down the leader, allowing you to bring your line in to net the fish. A six or seven weight with weight forward line is perfect and will allow you to mend line on the water through the waves. When it's time to cast back upwind for a new drift, the lift will load efficiently, and it's an easy roll forward to a pause before loading your back cast to shoot upwind along the drop off. And it's just like nymphing a riffle on a river, playing the wind on a lake also sets the drift in direction. Mend upwind into the waves to avoid large bows in your line, and to reduce drag on your leech that will lift it up out of the active feeding depth. By slowly working a shoal and drop off zone, anglers can work inside, middle, then outside casts from one position, casting up wind and drifting through those zones before walking five yards up the shoal and repeating. Of course, trout will always be cruising along, so conceivably you could stand in one spot and catch fish consistently. But sometimes big trout will turn to face the current that wave action creates, waiting for food to arrive. By moving along a shoal, you can pick up these lazy, big stationary trout. 